ST or Suicidal Tendencies, that's the name of the band from California. Everybody in metal scene should know by now. But of course, when we're talking about extreme metal, it is often forgotten or how they underrated band. Now, I hate the thing when people say about underrated, overrated, blah, blah, blah. It's called rather paradox, really, because for every person that says like this and that band is overrated, another one who will come by and say it's underrated. Because these are very, very subjective experiences and what one person might see is underrated, another one says quite the contrary. Now, however, Suicidal Tendencies is one of those bands that I wouldn't call myself a late bloomer, but it was already 90s, very, very early 90s when I uh, picked up that band and that band had been active since the very, very early 80s. So about 10 years later. But then again, comes with the age. I was born in 1975. So obviously, maybe by 1982, I would have been way too young to figure out what these punk rockers back then were doing. It's also a band that I've seen multiple times. I've uh, had the possibility, luckily, to interview Mr. Main Man Mike Moore once. That is, by the way, as an anecdote, throughout about my 200 interviews, only one interview, and it, that is one is Mike Moore, uh, that cut me, you know, the butterflies in my tummy. Yes, I was, to be honest, a little bit nervous with that one because he is something that I would consider one of my music idols for various reasons. First of all, he's a thinking man. He has written some of the best lyrics I've ever seen in metal music. Uh, he's a very talented and unique case when it comes to being a live performer and vocalist. And I just love the energy and passion he puts in music. So this is my love letter to Suicidal Tendencies, a retrospective video about the very band that has been here more than 40 years now, by now. And it hasn't been really without the changes. Um, this is a curious band because what started in 1981 started more or less hardcore punk. Here in Metal Archives, you can pretty much see it genre-wise, it's labeled as trash metal slash crossover, which I think is very, very true for most parts of the band, uh, the part of the band, the career, entire career throughout more than 40 years. But the roots are beyond metal. They are very much in hardcore punk. I mean, if you like a, like a, like a listen to the early albums, you will figure out it's a very, very different band than later on. And this has been quite of a bumpy road. This is also one of the very few bands that has written one of those very few 10 out of 10 albums for me. And yes, most of them come from the world of trash metal, death metal, black metal. This is a different breed and I hope that I can shed a little bit light to the music and explain why I like it so much and why it also has failed me throughout the years. But yeah, let's talk about suicidal tendencies. ST. I was supposed to actually wear one of my suicidal wear one of them. I have only one of them. Uh, one of my, my suicidal tendencies shirt, which I bought many many years ago when they were performing in Finland. I was actually first like forgetting that show, which is weird because that is the only one only time that I've seen them playing in a club. First time when I saw suicidal tendencies were when they were warming up for Metallica in 99. I was 17 years old kid and that was my first real uh, like a metal concert outdoors and all and uh, Suicidal Tendencies was the opening act and followed by Cult and obviously uh, last Metallica but later on I've seen them a couple of times at Tuska Festival uh, and that's where I got to interview them later on and two different venues uh, and uh, then one of these club kicks in Helsinki so four times in Helsinki and they're all different eras, different periods of the band's career and all that stuff. So I guess I've dipped my toes in the world of that music uh, a few times. And I only wish if I could fix one thing related to the band that I had been more accustomed to their music when I saw them in 1993. I think that was one of the things which really opened the floodgates. I mean, I had heard the band previously through my school friends and all, but I really hadn't, you know, how great of a band it was. And um, that was more or less
All right, let's talk about the early years. So whatever start in Venice Beach, Los Angeles, California, uh, was a very different band that you would see nowadays. I mean, if you take a look at these mo more modern uh, pictures, photos of the band, you see two guys in over 60s and one guy in 20s or so. This is a very curious band because not only Ty Trujillo, Trujillo, or Trujillo uh, plays in a band, now his father is the ex uh, bass player of uh, Suicidal Tendencies, later on Metallica. We're talking about Rob Trujillo. So this is kind of a generational thing. There are not too many bands which can say that they had the older generation and the younger generation, but this truly has. It's, it's a wonderful thing. But it's also kind of weird that, you know, Mike Moore, uh, being more than six years of age, he could be really basically the grandfather of this kid, or the very, at the very least, uh, his dad now, if you take a look at this uh text here i'm gonna of course read it all but this is one of the very important parts which you need to understand social dentists are considered by many the fathers of crush over trash now that comes for two reasons first of all they were there early on i mean we're talking about 1981 back then there were basically only a handful of trash metal bands you know like bands like exodus metallica and so forth not too many to be honest and secondly they were during the trash crossover early on when other bands were either doing it purely or then just you know going to different directions i mean we could have the endless debate about possessed where they did trash or just early death metal but suicidal tendencies they always had their punk rock seep through the music and that's kind of interesting so okay let's start talking about the discography and I'll explain what I talk about them. Let's talk about the, also the cover art a little bit. And of course, the lyrics. These are side topics, but still. So whatever started in uh, with the, after the demo phase, Usual Dentist is 1983. And this has a rather iconic cover. We'll get back to that later on. Um, this was already like a punk rock album, basically hardcore punk. Uh, while there is a very, very much a metallic sense to it, all these songs are more or less leaning to punk. And that was probably for me one of the major things which either taught me a thing or two about punk and its uh, relation to metal, but also kind of taught me that I'm not really a punk rocker myself. I mean, I get it. A lot of dead metal people, a lot of black metal people, trash metal people, obviously, were more or less interested in growing up with punk. But wasn't my thing. But pay attention to this cover. This is curious. They were like hanging up, hanging down, you know, from their feet and all. And we'll get back to that later on. However, this album made certain early songs about, you know, what would be later on iconized, like institutionalized, a, uh, you know, music video song, a hit song in a way, and they re-recorded later. And also Ice-T made his own version of this one. So it really, really made a thing. And all those lyrics early on, they were like kind of a punky, dealing with you know growing up teenage and all of a mess which, which comes back to the very name of the band you know there's this like suicide is an alternative you'll be sorry the kind of things because it's dealing with kind of a borderline depression and also like i don't know if i'm cut for this life and all like maybe i should kill myself and kind of a gloomy if you really think about it kind of a you know dsbm topics some of those lyrics they could really be the the, the suicidal black metal lyrics in a way but they were coming from a more punk side, so not so negative and, you know, wallowing and shit like that. Now, if we then again move on, what happened four years later, after a certain amount of years and a lot of changes, and now you have to understand, this is a band that had a lot of uh, members changes. This list this is vast. There were as many lineup changes basically in the early 80s. Look at this list quite of a big amount of people, as much as in the 90s and 2000s. So the band has been always in you know, you know, turmoil in that sense. And only one original member remains in the band, the vocalist and also the lyricist of the band, as much as I can tell, Mike Moore. But a lot of people have changed their years and there's not hardly any more in the 80s kind of people except Moore. Well, David Pleasance is from 1996, but yeah, we'll get to that era later on. Anyway, Join the Army was suddenly way more metallic. Having this kind of a very trash-looking cover album, it was clearly a transition phase of a thing. Now, suddenly, the uh, 
suicidal themes, the teenager growing pains and all that stuff were changed for a lot of ways. I mean, there was, of course, Having Fun, Possessed to Skate, a great song of early suicidal tendencies. They were also very much tapping to the ST kind of a thing, you know, Pink Psycho, and these topics are here, suicidal maniacs, suicidal, all these suicidal topics, not so necessarily so depressive and, and dark and, you know, not dealing with the... Uh, mental health and so forth. So these suicidal topics and psycho things already started to be repeated early on here. And they kept going, going on later on. But join the army is a transition phase. That is basically what you could use as a prototype for crossover trash. Because if the first album was basically hardcore punk, this is where punk rock uh, or hardcore punk melts into trashier stuff. It's already so much more metallic, but you can still clearly hear all those uh, early, uh, you know, hardcore punk things. So it is like best of both worlds in a way. Now, only a year later, which might seem a little bit like weird because there was four years and suddenly the band was changing so much. But of course, you have to understand sometimes. know if you know anything about california or los angeles things they were like two gangs and um this was related back to then i don't know how seriously i have read only something so i don't make too bold claims here but there was some relation them to be part of this whole thing but suicidal tendencies made uh in order you know with the psycho themes and suicidal themes they also made this bandana which is already in join the army and here it is once again, the bandana. This is where Mike Moore still had long hair. And, you know, this was kind of a metallic. They also made this thing of having the uh, the sports caps and flipping the cap, you know, the cap like this way. And it would say Sue Saddle here. A very trademark thing. And I, I think it was kind of a cool. Now, anyway, song-wise, this is, in my opinion, one of the better ones of suicidal tendencies. Um, it already made more metallic. And there were some groovy parts like Surf and Slam being instrumental, but very, very cool. Uh, and also, How Will I Love Tomorrow, one of the more iconic songs. Very, very atmospheric, very moody song. Almost like, where are you going? This was, in a way, uh, their emotional songs, like what you could have uh, from Metallic of the time, you know, early 80s. So, you know, like the Fate to Black kind of a thing. But this was two years later. But they were showing that they very, very, very much understood what was going on in the trash metal thing. So it wasn't that much of a punk rock anymore. It was going into different places. And this was followed quickly. And sometimes this is, by the way, uh, called EP rather than full album. But technically speaking, you know, nine songs, even if it's some cover material or well, quite a bit and there are a couple of versions of uh, how will i laugh tomorrow like this radio edit shorter two minutes which made into a music video if i remember correctly and this acoustic version which is very very strong and showcases how these guys understood the use of acoustic guitar and went even further with a trash metal crossover thing not so much a typical trash metal anymore but more going anyway but point is whether you call it an EP or album or whatever, uh, I think Control by Hater Schlass Feel Like Shit Deja Vu is still one of the best recordings. And this was already, again, using the bandana thing, but this time no people on the cover. But, you know, graphic design, much like the uh, Join the Army. So once again, photo here, then, you know, drawing, photo here, another drawing, all that stuff. All right. But they went further and further deeper into like pure trash metal with the next album, which is, in my opinion, one of their very, very best and has probably their best song ever. Well, at least one of them. You Can't Bring Me Down. This time, again, guys on the cover with a photo. And of course, this Lights Camera Revolution is a wordplay 
what you have in you know, like a studio sets like lights, camera, action. So basically setting up for camera film crew, like here it is, lights, camera, revolution. And this is one of their, you know, in a way, angrier albums, kind of hateful with the topics and all that stuff. You can hear it in music as well as their lyrics. And uh, this opening track, very, very iconic, uh, you know, video, uh, music video song, as well as a hit song, is very, very strong. That It has crazy good lyrics. I really, really love them. And they're the one of the lyrics that I kind of, uh, most parts can remember as well. But there are other great songs like Give You Revolution, Get Whacked, or the hilarious satirical Send Me Your Money, which is about the TV pastors. Like, oh, send me your money and you can get to talk to Jesus and all that stuff. The, the frauds, basically. And another set of two very, very uh, passionate and aggressive, straight to the point songs, This Goes Out Murders In, as well as Going Breakdown. These all have really, really good lyrics in my opinion, and, and one of the kind of, uh, you know, uh, what you would say, uh, most lyrics would pale in comparison, in my opinion, if you uh, uh, compare to this. And this already has a serially, serially good uh, crash metal riffs. It's crazy good in so many ways. You can hear the rhythm guitars doing the kind of, ding, 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 ding. oh, it's just magnificent. But even further, they went with the art of rebellion in a way. And I, I don't mean necessarily more extreme uh, in terms of trash metal, because Life Camera Revolution was basically the peak moment of that, like playing beer blood trash metal. Here again, by the way, once again, drawn um, cover, and I like it. The Mona Lisa is burning, so this is about rebellion. Basically, this card is like, I don't give a fuck, it's ST, man. Once again, the bandana is very much in play. I loved the cover already as a kid, and this album was the one one that I fell in love with deeply. And this is what the, the 10 out of 10 albums I was talking about. Can't Stop already is one of the albums with the best lyrics of all time in a bunny. However, most uh, lyrics written about it don't even include all the parts. You probably have to Google for the spoken parts between the, the parts that are actually sung. Um, there are great songs like Accept My Sacrifice or Monopoly on Sorrow, which uh, these are very, very much kind of a sarcastic album in a way. Um, uh, one of the songs which I really didn't like at first was this, I wasn't meant to feel this asleep at the wheel. But later on, it started to click with me to kind of a, I wouldn't call it a artsy, but kind of a uh, unlikely ST song. But great lyrics also and, you know, certain great mood with that. But when it's, um, you know, uh, accompanied with songs like Gotta Kill Captain Studi, one, oh, Stupid, once again, great lyrics and a great aggression, or this uplifting song about hating and revenge, I'll hate you better, at, uh, once again, a uh, music video track, I mean, this kind of a pale in comparison. And again, the rest of the song's really great. This is a song, uh, song sorry, album, which doesn't have any weak links, and uh, it just became a grower over the years and I really fucking love it. It's 10 out of 10 for me. Not just for the music, not just for the lyrics, but both. And perfect production. And this was the album which basically made me think I'm gonna PST for life. And then something happened. By the time the band had abandoned 80s, it was time for 90s, new waves, Metallica came out with the Black Album and blah, blah, blah. Things were changing. Grunge was, you know... Um, stealing audience from the metal people and all that stuff. It was reflected in way uh, a lot of bands. Also, new metal was a thing. So maybe these bands felt like they would need to be changed under pressure or whatever. Well, still psycho after all these years. You might not think about it. Yeah, it's it's it was, was something different, right? No, it's actually re-recordings of old songs. So suddenly more metallic take on the debut album. And now when I was saying like pay attention to the cover of the first album, here it is. Once again, the same, uh, I don't know what you call this rope or metal bar thing in the back, the kind of a cage, but here they are. And then this time only Mike Moore is hanging uh, from their feet, head down and trio and uh, other guys are here. And this was basically the end of peak moment, maybe partially because the lineup changes were happening. So this is not so much mandatory album to listen. It's fun to listen in comparison because they're more metallic versions of the early days. But as a 
individual uh, new album. It isn't like that. That was coming one year later, Suicidal for Life, which now has photo. It's not like photo, graphics, photo, graphics, but this time photo. And I don't know, this kind of a cover almost, almost reeks like this is it. This is going to be a changer here. This is actually pretty good of an album. I don't know why this isn't on Spotify. Uh, it has some really cool tracks that don't give a fuck. But for some reason, this was an, a, a disappointment me back in the days. Maybe because Art of Rebellion was so goddamn good. And this was not nearly as good. Nowadays, it actually feels more right than what it was back in the days. But I don't have the nostalgic feeling for this one so much as the albums until the Art of Rebellion. Even the early albums, which I don't think are that good as Lights, Camera, Revolution or the Art of Rebellion, they still have the kind of a nostalgic feeling for me. And then they went down. I mean, there's a reason why albums like Suicidal for Life is rated like 91 or uh, The Art of Rebellion 88. You get the idea. High Persian its albums in terms of reviews, opinions. Freedom. Okay, this is only one album a review, but still 11%. <laughs> so what the fuck was happening? Now, this is their worst albums album along with the next one that came. Maybe that's even worse. Uh, Freedom is suddenly... Like, it doesn't even look like Suicidal Tendencies album if you look at the cover. Something was changing. I don't know if it was because of grunge or new metal or whatever there was. But then again, the band was, officially anyway, broken up uh, around 1995, only to resurface a year later. But here, everything is like, you have an extensive amount of songs. They're not lengthy or anything like that, but these songs are not good. They are mediocrity at best, and... Uh, to be honest, uh, this is just a boring album. You have the still uh, suicidal themes, like, once again, remember when I was talking about the psycho things, or suicidal things, where they are here, like psycho vision. So it kind of wants to be a real suicidal tendencies album. It feels like bad leftovers are scraped and like, let's put an, uh, an album out and it's not good. And this is probably even worse. Free your soul and save my money. Yet another stupid cover. So maybe it goes hand in hand. Um, this doesn't work. I mean, there are songs like Sukasa, Esmikasa, which is pretty cool, at least in the grooviness. And there are, once again, these psycho themes mentioned, psycho speak. But, you know, as an, as an album, uh, as well as lyrical sense, this feels like it's really a leftover couple. Freedom, which is by the girl, of course, a wordplay for Freedom. Uh, so, t 1999 and 2000s. Mind you, five years gap here, and only one year here. Uh, these two albums are the worst two little tendencies ever made. And it feels like they totally lost the ball. They It's almost like in sports, you lose a magical coach or quarterback, captain of the team or whatever, and then you start hustling around, doing what the fuckery, and things are not the same. Now, 10, there was a big gap. 10 years. So from 2000 to 2001, 10 with the next album. I mean, you had the compilations and whatnot, but they're compilations, they're not new albums. I don't know what happens, and suddenly this was something that came out strong. Suddenly the album cover is, by the way, cool in a way too. They're just skulls, and when I was talking about the suicidal cap, you know, everything is just cool. But then again, a lot of these, you know, songs are in a way re-versions, remade versions of the old ones. You get the Possessed to Skate and other songs like Join the ST Army, which is basically a new version of Join the Army. I don't know what was the reasoning for this one, but it, it's it's fun to listen to. It's not maybe necessary to own it. I don't have it. But, you know, when you go back to it and it's like, hey, this is very, very cool. And then now they suddenly had a good, great production. Um, and of course, the songs are so much better. So at least you can defend it for that. Then came the album 13. Three years later, uh, so maybe this was like let's let's do something, let's make us relevant again before we make new music. And then came thirteen, which is like back, back again, and you know, drone covers and bandana teams, skulls of course, the later era of social tendencies, skulls. And uh, while they, this is in the great album, uh, it is uh, you know way better than what it used to be. And once again, the psycho themes. Psycho style is here. Slam City, you know, surf and slam. So these are like recycling certain ideas, which is reflected then again in the lyrics. 
And this is nowhere near as good as when, you know, Suicidal T Tendencies was peaking, you know, making their best albums. But at least it had some cool ideas. And uh, World Gone Mad, another three years later, is basically tapping to the same world. And as you can see, now the theme is clear. Skulls, Suicidal Tendencies. <laughs> They, 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 these hats or bandanas and, you know, drawn covers. World Gone Mad is very much, to, you know, like a proper successor to the album 13. And there's some cool songs, like your opening songs, Clap Like Us. It's very, very catchy to you. And you hear it only once and then you start kind of hearing it in your head. And the new Degeneration is pretty good of a song and all that stuff. So while this isn't exactly the best of the albums out there, it kind of a restored hope with the previous albums 13, that Suicidal Tendencies could be relevant. Now, it's already been six years since the previous album, but back in the days, it came two years after The World Gone Mad, and I missed this back in the days. But still psycho punk after all these years. This is like old school. And once again, Skulls and Bandana, and also the flannel, flannel shirt. So this is almost like going back, the circle is complete, almost 40 years by this time in the game. And... Uh, this is also doing the same pattern as the two previous albums, like making sure that Suicidal Tendency's legacy is not wasted. It's it's like right there, you know, doing it crush over trash. And uh, it's kind of actually magnificent how they made this comeback after the, the turn of the Millennium albums, which were like halfway through, through nowadays, if you really think about it. I mean, back then, it was already almost 20 years in the game and they, they lost the ball. And now, about 15 years later after that, well, 13, 14, well, they kind of made it back. Um, I've used the word, different letters for bands to describe how their careers are. They're like these Ws. You start well, then go down, then suddenly climb back again, go down and come back again. I wouldn't use this for Suicidal 10, but maybe if we just invert it and start talking about the Ms, because in my opinion, Suicidal Tendencies was climbing up only to come a little bit down and then going back again. And, well, maybe even that is not really uh, the right letter for that. Maybe it's N, you know. First it was the early albums. Whoa, going up. Like, getting better after the punky other albums. And, you know, peaking, in my opinion, with Light Camera Revolution and The Art of Rebellion. That's the N. And then you go down, like, steep decline after a few years for deed freedom and free, for your soul. And now they're climbing up again. So maybe it's not full any yet, but more like N and we're somewhere here in the midways. So in my opinion, it's a fucking great band overall with, uh, what do you have, 14 albums? I mean, they technically speaking, this is listed for like 14 or so. But if you remove uh, like this still psycho after all these years, which because it's technically speaking the debut album remade, then you get back to lesser than that. And if you really remove all the albums that have been recycling songs, maybe we're talking about le less than that. But I mean, that's the indication why number 13 is basically if you count to like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? So my point here is like, um, whether you count this, this and that, I mean, it, it depends. Anyhow, point here is, uh, it's an interesting uh, journey. It's an interesting career and lots of these sing singles, you know, can be skipped as releases when you're going through that stuff because they're either the, you know, music video uh, singles or whatever of the song. So you can pretty much just go with the full albums and, you know, you're cool to go with this ST. But it still ponders me why on earth they wanted to do Freedom and Free Your Soul so weird. Because now if you look at take a look at this, Mike Moore also had Infectious Grooves already since the late 80s until 2000, until to come back later on. And this album, a band, while they made, didn't make much music, still four albums, and had these other members from Suicide Lendencies, including... Uh, Metallica's nowadays, Robert Trujillo, as well as Dean Pleasance. My point here is, and of course Bruce Weckerman even, you know, my point here is, these were basically all suicidal tendencies guys, you know, doing music, which was more like funk metal slash rock. So almost like the, the parts that 
wouldn't fit in suicidal tendencies and they were me making that music. And you have even more ex-suicidal tendencies members if you take a look at this past members thing. So it's kind of weird because when you take a look at the uh, suicidal tendencies discography, it almost sounds like albums like Freedom and Free Your Soul should be more in the infrastructure groups, uh, territory, camp, whatever. I don't know the story, I don't know the reasoning and to be honest, I don't want to be the judgmental asshole who says, like, you should have done it and blah, blah, blah. But it's just weird, uh, in hindsight, like, why these albums are even part of the, you know, ST canon. However, all these uh, weak parts included ST is still a very strong band. Now, my personal record collection uh, starts with Join the Army and ends with The Art of Rebellion, which is, in my opinion, the golden era, when the band was young, passionate, hungry, thirsty to make, uh, you know, a big footprint, uh, making their best lyrical ideas too, uh, especially with the art of rebellion. Uh, well, Last Camera Revolution also has really, really great stuff. So this is where it peaked for me, and I fucking love it. I mean, still, up to this day, there are no bands that could challenge these albums in their own game. Well, there's actually one band that is basically paying homage to Susan Tendencies, now cease to exist, and that's Dr. Living Dead from Sweden. Of all the places from Sweden, you get the Suicidal Tendencies copycat band. More trashier, but similar uh, vocal output, which is one of the reasons why I love Suicidal Tendencies. Mike Moore's voice is unique. I mean, I get it, it's it's easy to dislike it. It's so soft and all that stuff, and not so, you know, trashy. So it's like very, very unconventional, but I think that's part of the charm, and Talking about the the key parts, what was essentially now nowadays in the past, but I mean, like uh, Mike Clark uh, from 1987, 1987 to 2011, he made fucking great, uh, you know, gittering in in suicidal tendencies. Of course, when you take a look at the Rupert Trujillo, he wasn't only banned in this more than six years, but. These eras, you know, when I were talking about my favorite albums and the, the, the skill that was in the band, I mean, it's just like crazy. Rocky George, uh, this this was probably Rocky George, Mike Clark, Trujillo, Mike Moore kind of a thing. I mean, that was probably the peak moment stuff. So it has had great musicians. I've seen it, you know, even uh, Dave Lombardo of Slayer, uh, perform live and man, Suicidal Tendencies have had some great drummers in the past too. But of course, sometimes these great talents didn't, you know, exist in the band at the same time. But there is a reason, in my opinion, why it peaked in the early 90s, especially with these two albums, because all the skill were there right there and because it's trashier than the previous albums or later ones. And, and that's the reason for me. Now, I wish Suicidal Tendencies can keep going on a little bit further, a little bit more, because, I, you know, Mike Moore is over 60, probably not going to do it 20 years anymore. We are lucky if they're going to do it 5 or 10 years. Let's hope they will make some albums before time runs out in their uh, entire department, and uh, you never know how bad or how well they're going to do the next stuff, if ever. It's a one band that you should see live when you still have the chance. And if you're a newcomer to the whole band, or to the channel for that matter, I urge you to give Suicidal Tendencies a chance. Now, of course, you probably know what I'm going to suggest if I get to say, like, pick three albums, what to start figuring out Suicidal Tendencies. They're going to be The Art of Rebellion, Light Scammer Revolution, and then it gets tricky, but I would probably say, how will I laugh tomorrow when I can't even smile today? Because it's a great band, and in my opinion, it should have more um, audience, especially outside the United States, because I think they are pretty much major audiences anyway, right there. And people don't probably understand their value to crush or trust, because it's as impactful to that as, say, Venom is to black metal and all. Even if Suicidal Tendency's career to uh, cross over trash is as, you know, how to say, consistent or lack of it, like what Celtic Frost is to black metal. Think about from the morbid tales to whatever happened between, you know, that and the, the latest album and, and all, and you will understand probably what I, better what I mean. And if you don't know these albums, don't ma doesn't matter. Um, but give some love to Social Tendencies. Give it a chance if you have never, never 
heard it before. I think it's a great band, and uh, I'm happy that I got to witness the band live a few times. I'm really happy that I got to pick Mike Moore's brain in the interview, which I will link to this interview in the very end. And uh, I hope more people will, will give it a chance to uh, suicidal tendencies. It's a fucking great band, so suicidal. Take care and uh, see you soon with more retrospective videos later on. If you have suggestions what to do, you can always suggest and recommend them to me. But first, we'll uh, focus on the bands I've interviewed. So about 200 more to go before your uh, suggestion might come true. But still, keep, keep them coming and... Uh, Please let me know how you like these uh, retrospective videos. If you don't, it's fine. If you do, it's great. See ya. Bye-bye.